In previous episodes from our course on Hex Foundations, we use Python and SQL to answer actual business questions such as, which menu items generated the most annual revenue? But this project lacks something important, which is context for our readers who might be viewing this project later. Now, starting today, we'll be going back to our Polygon project and iterating on it so that we can build up a more interactive report. We'll be focusing on adding and formatting text in your projects, how to add and configure single value cells, and how to use table displays. By the end of this, you'll understand why adding context is so important and how you guys can do this inside of Hex. All right, let's go ahead and get started. So here we are in our previous adventure on Polyglot Workflows, where I think the reader will benefit from some plain old text in our project so that they don't have to scratch their head trying to dissect our code. So at the top of my project, I'm going to add a new text cell and I am going to just paste in the text that I want to add. Dope, so if you ever dibble dabbled in a text editor before, this may be pretty intuitive to you. So I won't spend a large amount of time giving you a text cell overview. However, I will go into the specifics of spicing up our text, starting with some formatting. To let the reader know what this cell is trying to convey, I think I'm gonna start by adding a header to the cell, which I can do in a couple of ways. The first way is to just use some basic markdown style formatting. So what I can do is come up to the top of the cell and hit the pound sign. And then I wanna have this cell basically just set up the scene for what's going to be going on in this project. So I'm going to name this cell setting or uh, title the cell setting the the scene. So pretty cool. Now we have an H1 header in our text cell. But if I wanted to make this an H2 header, for example, I could do something like double pound sign or triple pound, oops, triple pound sign to make this an H3 or quadruple pound sign to make this an H4. So you have multiple options for the types of headers that you can use inside of your text cells. The other way I can format this text cell is by using the UI driven formatting option, which I can get to by selecting the text that I want to format, which is going to be this header right here. And then you'll see that this kind of like floating UI bar appears that I've nowhere and we can use this to further format our cell so if I wanted to change this back to an h1 I can do that like this or I can even change it to like a quote or a just normal text um, but I'm gonna keep this as an h1 just so that the reader will know that this cell is, is used to set the scene of the project this is just letting the reader know what this project is all about and what we're gonna be doing in our analysis now other than headings we have a few other formatting options if you saw on top so we have I'll just highlight this again we have the option to make this text bold we can italicize this. We can underline text, strike text out. We can even have some inline code formatting and then we can add links. We can make this into an order list or an unordered list. So let's say in the text I wanted to add some emphasis on some of the words in this cell. So for example, maybe I wanted to make the um, dumplings, noodles, or maybe sweets uh, bold, for example. So I can come here and I can hit the bold option. And then maybe I want to say, uh, I want to highlight this important to let them know this is important. This is important to know where our revenue is coming from. So maybe I want to underline this you feel me um so that's how you can further format the text in your guys' text cells using either that markdown style formatting options or you can use the ui driven formatting options now the last thing i want to do is i want to make this cell look visually interesting by adding an image to my project and i can do that very easily by simply dragging and dropping an image straight into my text cell just like this and now you can see that we have an image in our cell and let's kind of get this aligned a little bit better maybe I want that to be right in the center and the nice thing about uploading images to your text cells like this is that the images are actually available in your files tab so we can see that we have dumplings well I uploaded another dumplings image earlier but we can see that we have two dumplings jpeg images right here and we can even reference this in a downstream cell or even download this image pretty cool if you ask me that's just me though I think this is all the text, the context that I wanted to add in my project so far. And maybe we would add like a, a last cell, for example, saying like, this is where the final results. So maybe I'll say something like final results. And then I'll make that H1 tag and say, below are the most profitable menu items for the year 2020, since we are looking at 2020 in our project. Actually, I'm gonna change this to 2015, since that's what we had in the original project. So I'm gonna 
Thursday of 2015, and I can run a sell. So we can see that the most profitable items for 2015 are the Shrimp Hargal. You've already seen this, I'm not gonna go through it again, but you can see right here, that is how you can add some context with text sales to your project. Not only can you add context with text sales, but we also have a markdown option inside of Hex. Markdown sales give you the same level of control in terms of formatting. The only difference is that it doesn't have the option to do that UI driven formatting that we see in the text sales. So I'm gonna actually just quickly show you guys if I actually come over to my sidebar, or if I come over to the side of the cell, I can get this three dot menu, I can convert my cell to a markdown cell. And you can see nothing changed in the output, but now we have this, uh, we have a markdown editor in the top of our cell. So if I want to do a formatting, for example, let's say I want to italicize this, I can do some asterisks. And if I want to make this bold, I can add two asterisks. And this is just showing you guys that it doesn't have that UI driven formatting. You have to do it more in this, in this markdown style. And I will leave a resource in the description, giving you guys a little cheat sheet on all of the markdown formatting syntax. Now, on top of formatting text and markdown cells, there are also some pretty cool dynamic formatting options, but we will not be covering that today, and we will be talking about that in a future episode. Okay, now, another way to display information in your guys' hex project is to use a single value cell. And this cell does exactly as the name implies, which is to display a single value. This can be really useful for showing like statistics on screen, for example, like total revenue for some year, or the average sale price for a, a menu item, or just any other type of numerical statistic that you want to show on screen. Let's actually use a single value cell to display how many completed orders that we have um, for all menu items across all years. And since we kind of already have most of that calculation figured out, since we have all of our orders per year, and this is only taking into account our total or uh, total completed orders, we can just count up how many rows are in this data set and display that in our single value cell. So I'm going to come down here and I will add a new line and I'll just paste this in, which is basically going to count uh, how many rows are in our orders per year data set and what I'll do here is I will add a new single value cell so to configure my single value cell I can hit on this the like empty value placeholder text that's in the middle or I can hit this cog icon right here so what I want is I want to use this all rows value as my input right here and we can already see that it looks like it's 3215 and then as my title i'll just say number of completed orders there's also some formatting options that you can use in single value cells and this lets you do things like uh right now we're displaying it as plain text but we can also display it as a number which will add some decimal points we can display it as a percent if this number was kind of like a like a point zero six or something like that it would show like 60 percent or we can show it in scientific notation so we have a whole bunch of really nice formatting options to use in these single value cells now this is just a count of all the rows so I'm just gonna keep it as plain text like this now we have a single value cell in our project showing us how many orders we have completed across all of our years you can also load in values straight from your data frames so let me show you guys how that works I will add a new single value cell and I will configure this to use my orders per year data set. And then I can choose the column that I want to actually display data from. So let's say I want to display, um, let's say I want to display the profit, right? And then now I can choose a row to show. So like my profit for the row zero, for row zero should be $45. For the first row should be 153. And as we can keep, we can keep going up and choosing a row to display our data from. So it's pretty cool that you can have all these different options for how you can load information into these single value cells. You can just use raw Python variables or you can use uh, data frames. So I'm gonna delete this actually and cause that's not really what I wanted to show and I will move on. Now, the last thing I wanna show you guys are the table display cells, which you guys have kind of already seen a little bit because table displays are actually the exact same thing as if I were to come into my SQL cell and just hit the display option like that. That is table display. Table displays make it really easy to view, format, and filter your tabular data. For example, if I have a data frame that I want to display and I don't want it to be attached to a SQL query or I don't want it to be just like the output of a Python data frame, I can use a table display to display my data frame's content. And the nice thing about this is that when you're using a table display, your data is a lot more interactive because you get the options to like page through it if there are lots of rows in your table and you can format it and you can change how the view looks a whole bunch of cool options that we will be looking at so let's just go ahead and create a table display so we can dive into how it works so to add a new table display i'm gonna hit on this add button and i will go to the visualization and hit table display and now my table display is locked and loaded ready for that juicy data what i need to do is i want to choose the data frame that i need it or i want it to display so i think i'm just gonna do my orders per year data frame since it has well not the most data in it but it has a good amount 
lot of data versus like this one that only has five rows. But here you can see that we have all 3,215 rows as a table display. Really nice, we can scroll down. We got 50 rows in here. We can keep on paging through. So this is what I was saying before, how these table displays are really interactive, but this also gives you the option to do things like change the view so I can show the row numbers or not. These are all things, and these are all things that we even got a little preview of in our SQL video. So we can change how the view looks. We can format it to uh, with like some conditionals. So I can say like all columns where the value is equal to, let's say eight, for example. If I save that, this whole row, yeah, that's all red, that's all red, that's all red. And then we can even change the color if you wanted to. Like maybe we want to see green. You know, red is giving me like alarm, alarm, alarm. Green is like green light, look at me, look at me. You know what I mean? So. Looks pretty nice, that's how you format. <laughs> yeah, so it looks pretty nice. I'm gonna actually delete this formatting because I do not really want any formatting, and I'll say that. Um, and then also, you have the option to copy this whole table to clipboard, you can resize the table display, and you can download the whole thing as a CSV. Now, on top of that, you have the option to filter your tabular data with this filters option. And I can come up here and click on them. And I can say something like where, let's say the order year is equal to, let's say 2015, since I see a bunch of 2015 data right there. And now our rows, our table should be reduced. Yep, now we only have 444 rows. And this is only showing us the data where the year is equal to 2015. Now, the cool thing about this is that now that I filtered my data, I actually get this output variable that I can use in downstream cells like Python, for example. And I can say table result dot head. And now I'm using my filtered results that I did in a table display directly in my Python cell. <laughs> Table displays can actually go pretty deep. There's a lot more that you can do with this. I mean, you can do a lot more things like renaming your columns. You can change how it's sorting. You can filter individual rows or individual columns. All this good stuff that you guys can play around with with the table displays and have as much fun as you possibly can have. Oh, man, and that wraps up another episode, man. I. I applaud you for making it all the way to the end of this episode and all the way through the series. If you've been here from day one, you are a real trooper and I love you for that. As always, I didn't forget because I will leave you guys with something to keep in mind from this episode. And for today, something to keep in your guys' mind, you can add context to your guys' text projects with the use of text or markdown cells, each of which comes with a bundle of formatting options. Single value cells are used to display numerical values in your project and are a really good way of showing statistics that you calculated from your data. And lastly, table displays makes it really easy to view, format based on conditions, and filter tabular data such as data frames in your guys' projects. All right, well it's been a fun time hanging out with you as always and if you have any lingering questions leave them down below in the comments and i will try to answer them as best as i can or you could just tell me your favorite fun facts for example mine is that the mitochondria is the powerhouse of the cell i hope you guys enjoyed this video and i will see you guys you in the next one you right there get some of this apple juice it's fire